Hello, I'm Professor Linda Van Drummel, and I teach in the School of Health Policy and Management. Today, I'd like to tell you about a new approach to designing first year courses for students who are transitioning into university. It's called Pedagogy That Aids Transition for Higher Ed Students, or PATHS. A few years ago, some instructors in the Faculty of Health decided to look at ways to support students transitioning into university through the design of our first and second year courses. We know that researchers have been looking at the predictors of student success in university, and some of those predictors include giving students the opportunity to build the skills that allow them to be resourceful and resilient in academic situations. We also know that when students have early and supported opportunities to engage in teamwork, learn self-regulation, practice self-reflection, engage in opportunities to scaffold their learning, and make connections between their coursework and the real world, they're more likely to experience success in their academic studies. Our approach is to embed these five path skill sets teamwork, self-reflection, self-regulation, scaffolded learning, and making connections between their coursework and the real world into first-year courses so that all students have the opportunity to build these paths competencies. Learning in a course that incorporates these paths approaches can take many forms, and not all courses that incorporate paths tools and resources will look the same. In fact, students will receive supports and opportunities to learn these path skills in many different ways, unique to the subject matter of the course. We've designed a paths toolkit to be flexible to fit any discipline. We've also created a practical guide in the toolkit to help professors select and incorporate the interactive tools that are most appropriate for their course to meet their course learning objectives. When past resources are part of course design, the goal is that students will use these interactive tools to build their skills in the past areas of teamwork, self-reflection, self-regulation, engaging in scaffolded learning, and making connections between the course content and the real world, all while achieving the learning outcomes of the course. Additionally, students will have access to an electronic resource library that can provide further supports as they move throughout their degree. The PATHS team is excited to make this toolkit available for both instructors and students in higher education. Welcome to PATHS. My name is Karen Page Cotrera and I teach at the School of Nursing. As a lifelong learner myself, I know that self-reflection is an important skill for all learners to develop. Self-reflection is an analysis of one's own thoughts, feelings, and actions. It's a way for learners to examine how they acquire information, study, and engage in opportunities to develop new knowledge. It's a powerful tool that can be used to improve performance and decision-making. PATHS resources support the development of self-reflection starting in the first years of a program. When used within a program, self-reflection is a professional approach to thinking about learning and work experiences. Self-reflection enables learners to develop their abilities to analyze, think critically, communicate, and form connections between course content and real-world contexts. Self-reflection frameworks can be embedded in courses so that learners can begin to integrate these important tools into their thinking. For instance, in-class or online learning can include a three-step guided reflection exercise and can occur in small or large class settings as an individual or paired activity. Reflective thinking can be practiced when new concepts are introduced, in response to viewing a film or video clip, or even after a test to facilitate the integration of knowledge and how future thinking and behavior will change as a result. Self-reflection components can be built into course assignments so that feedback on the application of self-reflection frameworks is provided. Learners will build their self-reflection skills starting at the beginning of a program using accessible paths resources.
Teamwork is an important foundational skill for successful transition into university. It's all about working together, collaborating, communicating, cooperating in order to achieve a common goal. Teamwork can be informal where two students work together to understand and solve problems related to complex issues in order to be successful in their schoolwork. It can also include formal opportunities to work together, like students participating in a group project, working together in an assigned group or a voluntary group in order to complete a task. Teamwork, however, is more than just doing group projects. The skills required to be effective team members include things like communication and relationship skills, planning and scheduling, demonstrating personal accountability, and engaging in conflict resolution. It's also important that students who engage in teamwork are able to give and receive feedback. Practicing and receiving support to develop these types of skills to help students be successful will aid them in their coursework, but will also prepare them for their careers after their undergraduate degree. This is why providing supports to students to learn and practice these skills in their first year courses is important for student success. When I think about the skills like communication and being accountable, planning and organizing and resolving conflicts, it feels like they're foundational skills for all aspects of life. I teach a first year course in health studies and one of the assessments for this very large class is having groups of four to five students come together to create an infographic. Recognizing that many of these students are new to York University and they've not yet developed social connections or professional connections in class, I find that it's helpful to use a tool like a group contract. This helps students to have conversations about their expectations for themselves as well as for their colleagues around how work will be divided and how people will be held accountable for their part of the task. It also helps students have initial conversations around expectations for behavior and conduct in meetings, uh, whether it be virtual meetings or in-person meetings, and also expectations for communication. I use a simple group contract tool that was developed by the PATHS team, and it is a flexible and adaptable group contract that I can actually make changes to according to uh, how I've designed my course. And it's available right in eClass, so I can import that tool directly into my eClass shell and have students complete the tool within eClass. I can make decisions about whether or not I'm going to assign a grade for completing that tool, or if it's just something that students will have to do as part of their activities in the course without a grade. The tool is really helpful because it walks students step-by-step step through completing it. Uh, students are given uh, prompts as to what sort of things they need to think about at each point in completing this group contract. And it also provides students with links to other supportive resources within York University and external to York University that can help students to become effective team members. Hello everyone, my name is Brian Nairn and I'm an educational developer with the Teaching Commons at York. Today, I want to provide a very quick overview of one of the Pedagogy to Aid Transition or PAT attributes. Self-regulation really involves the ability to identify and assess our own internal state, such as emotions, motivations, and skills, and also to develop a strategy for how to effectively respond to any external challenges. For me, this notion of self-regulation is very important to the transition into post-secondary education. Helping students be more aware of their own thoughts and emotions and understanding why one might be feeling a certain way can help students identify their own academic strengths and weaknesses. Being able to process information by responding and not reacting can lead to a healthier mindset. In practice, I could see using the practicing mindfulness to become self-regulated learners activity as being quite relevant. Practicing mindfulness can help students focus on the current task while not getting distracted by past or future worries. This also helps to control emotions and harness thoughts and feelings related to one's own learning. In a large first year class, I see students learning about self-regulation through these PAS modules and then applying this with something like ongoing journal reflections for students to think back on their own learning. 
By setting the students up for success with this PaaS activity, we are able to go deeper in our application as students will have this initial information to guide them in their own self-regulation. One of the five TADS attributes is scaffolded learning. Scaffolded learning refers to a method of instruction that progressively guides students not only toward a deeper understanding of course material, but also toward becoming more independent learners. This student-centered and collaborative approach is similar to an apprenticeship. Students, like apprentices, are carefully guided through a process of acquiring new knowledge and skills by instructors who have carefully set up the scaffolding and structure their students need in order to be successful. Instructors begin by assessing the student's current level of knowledge and then from there establishing which supports or scaffolds are needed to effectively guide their students. As the students begin to gain a sense of mastery over that material, the instructor can then gradually remove some of that support and allow the student to progress on to the next task or higher level concept. This approach requires the instructor to be mindful in their selection of appropriate tasks, such that they are engaging, but not too challenging. They must also anticipate in advance the kinds of mistakes that students are likely to make while completing a task. The supports offered must be organized and consistent, and feedback provided should be timely, constructive, and encouraging, so that students don't become discouraged and so that they receive concrete feedback that allows them to learn from their mistakes and to improve over the course of the term. In my own teaching practice, I incorporate scaffolded learning in a number of ways. I start each of my courses with a brief questionnaire to gauge my students' level of knowledge about the subject matter. I include multiple types of assessments, ranging from low to high stakes, that develop not only their subject knowledge, but also help them work on their writing and self-reflection skills. I create step-by-step -step instructions and detailed grading rubrics for written assignments by anticipating the difficulties my students might have in advance. This also helps my teaching assistants to effectively and efficiently grade assessments and to provide students with timely, constructive feedback that allows the students to learn from their mistakes and to improve over the course of the term. The PATHS Toolkit provides instructors with scaffolded learning activities that they can easily incorporate into their course design as well as strategies for providing timely, meaningful feedback on assessments and sample grading rubrics that can be applied to any assessment. By incorporating resources on scaffolded learning from the PATHS Toolkit, instructors are helping their students learn how to learn better, and they're maximizing their students' opportunities to be successful within a supportive classroom environment. Hi there, I'm Dr. Nicolette Richardson, an Associate Professor teaching STREAM in the School of Kinesiology and Health Science at York University. An important component of the PAT Toolkit in my teaching is making connections. Research has shown time and again that students learn and remember information more effectively if they're able to connect it to a lived experience, uh, either something they do or something they know, either from inside or outside the learning environment. In making these connections, there's a great deal of potential to improve the student's sense of uh, connectiveness and academic culture through improving their appreciation, not just for what they're learning, but for why they're learning it. In some of my larger classes, which are 800 to 1,000 students, uh, I encourage students to make connections between the anatomical concepts we're discussing and the relationships between structures with uh, something with a movement they do or even an injury they've had or that someone they know has had. Uh, for example, when we're learning about the anatomical structures and relationships in the knee, uh, it's very easy to uh, bring in a couple of examples of famous athletes who the students might be familiar with uh, who have had different types of knee injuries and then we can connect that to the different anatomical structures we're discussing. In the PAT Toolkit, there's an H5P activity called Setting Smarter Goals, uh, which guides students through the development of goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Uh, now, this is something that we have taught uh, for a long time in an introductory course in kinesiology and health science. Uh, we have the students apply the SMART concept to some aspect of their life 
again, to make those connections. Uh, so it would be really easy and effective to take this H5P activity from the toolkit and drop it into that course as a supplement uh, to what we're already doing or as a replacement to other activities that maybe aren't working as effectively as we'd like them to.